Boom. Uh, in this video, we're going to start um, on our long march to proving uh, or deriving the Black Scholes formula, which, um, as we've discussed, is a very famous financial statistical formula for evaluating uh, the price of a call option, um, which we've kind of introduced in a previous video. Um, again, the uh, this uh, approach is vastly helped by Stephen Blythe's introduction to quantitative finance. Um, is a, a really good proof uh, and derivation of it there. So I've linked that in the description. Um, and if you want to read more it, about the uh, kind of chapter we're talking about, I've also linked that um, in the description for you know the, the probability channel version of the book. So both of those are linked in the description. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, thinking about uh, sort of how we're going to be modeling a stock as we you know approach actually using the Black Scholes formula. So we've used this notation before, um, briefly, when we talk about calls, we're going to say S sub T is the price of the stock at time T, okay? And again, a stock is some percent of ownership in the company. You buy a share of Apple, and maybe at time one, it's worth $400, time two, it's worth 410 whatever. So, you, you know, the stock, the, the price moves around through time. And we're going to think about a simple case where the stock has two options um, between now and time T plus one. Okay. There's two options. It can either go up, so it has an up move. And it has a down move. So we use U and D for up and down move. In the up move, the stock is worth uh, 1 plus U times the stock price of time T. And in the down move, it's worth uh, 1 plus D. Stock price at time t. So these are both the stock price at time t plus one. It's either uh, you know the stock price at time t times one plus u, or the stock price at time time d times one plus u. And you know these can both be positive or negative. Like maybe the stock is definitely going to go up. It's just like either going to go up you know five percent or two percent. Maybe the stock's definitely going to go down, and it's either going to go down one percent or or ten percent. Um, you know, often it, probably the most intuitive way to think about this is that it goes up with you know, maybe this is 0.2, so it goes up 2%, and it goes down 1%, so it goes up or down. But, you know, these, these kind of can be any numbers. We just have, like, an up move, which is which is kind of larger than the down move. And we also, how much space do I have? We also have um, R, we're going to say, equals the risk-free full space. Okay. So R equals the, the risk-free rate, uh, which you might have heard before. What this means is that you can make, um, sorry, that's one plus R, that's not right. One dollar Sorry, I'm writing. Okay, so the idea here, and this is kind of, you're probably used to like savings rates or interest rates. This is kind of like an interest rate. Um, when you invest in stocks, there's risk. It can go up, it can go down. Most investments have risk. There are certain investments that are risk-free, right? You, you lend someone money or you invest money, kind of the same thing, and um, you are 100% going to make the same amount. Like you put your money in a bank savings account and you're going to make 1% on that money a year or, or a period or whatever. The idea is if you, know, you, you lend, you invest at R, in the next period you make back 1 plus R. So if R is 1% here, you invest a dollar, in the next period you make back you know, 1 plus a cent. So you have a dollar and one cent. That, that's the idea. You can either have a stock in this world, stock goes up or down, it's risky, or you can invest your money safely, risk-free rate. Now we're going to introduce... Um, we're going to introduce this kind of constraint. And this is saying that the down move, so the move of the stock, is less than the risk-free rate, which is also less than the up move. And this is something called the no arbitrage, or it's, it's using something called the no arbitrage principle. Okay. So this is kind of intuitive. We already kind of remember that D and D is less than U. 
Um, but why does r have to be greater than d, and why does r have to be less than u? Okay. So let's uh, let's let's think about this. Let's think about the case where r is less than d is less than u, and maybe r is 0.01, d is 0.03, u is 0.05. Okay. So if this is the case, if r is 0.01, d is 0.03, u is 0.05, and these are the only two options. You can either buy the stock or you can <coughs> uh, lend at the risk-free rate. Um, you can lend your money, and I'm also going to put a little hint. You can also borrow. So you can either lend your, out your money out and make you know, 1 plus R in the next period, or you can borrow money from someone and pay back 1 plus R in the next period. So if, that, if, if that's the case and you have point, you know, R is less than D is less than U, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with your $100? So what you can do is something called uh, arbitrage, the no arbitrage principle, where you make guaranteed money. There's no risk to making your money, and not only is there no risk, but you can like make theoretically make a ton of money by, by levering up, which is what we're going to see. So if this is the case, you, you're going to borrow <clears throat> borrow $100 at 1%, because 1% is the risk-free rate. Right? You're going to borrow $100 at 1%, and you're going to buy $100 of stock. So you, you, you start with zero money. You go to the bank, you say, I want $100, I'll pay you back tomorrow, 1% interest, and you go and buy $100 worth of stock. At T plus one, the worst case scenario, you have the stock, the stock either does the up move or the down move. The worst case scenario is that it's the down move, or that the lower move, which you, in this case, it's not down, it's just less than up, um, which you make, we're just gonna do the worst case, so at T plus one, you have um, $103. So you know the stock move is the D move, not the U move. Again, they're both up. In this case, you have $103. And you have to pay back your original, you know, what you borrowed plus interest. So you have to pay back that $101. So you borrowed $100. That's a really ugly 101. You borrowed $100. You have to pay back that plus interest. And you just made $2. And that doesn't seem like a lot of money. You just made $2. But you started with zero money. You had absolutely nothing. You went to the bank. You made this little transaction. And you went and bought the stock. And from $0, like, you had nothing. You just made this $2. Theoretically, you can do this a lot. Like, what, what if instead of borrowing $100, you borrowed, you know, 100 to the 10 or, or something crazy? You borrowed a ton of money, um, and, and you did this. You can make a ton of money on this $2. And what's cool is you, you know, technically... You invested. You started with zero dollars, so your returns are, are quite easy to divide by zero is undefined. You're making a ton of money for, for zero dollars. So this would be crazy if this happened. And in fact, the the idea behind all this is if this did happen, if R was less than D was less than U, right? A lot of people would be going to the bank to borrow money, right? Because in this in this case, yeah, kind of. in this case, you're going to the bank and you're saying, "Here's my money." Um, that's the opposite. You're going to the bank, and they're saying, "Here's a hundred dollars," and you're saying, "You know, here's one percent, so it's going to be one hundred and one dollars." They're they're like, "We're going to lend you a hundred dollars," and and you say, "Okay, tomorrow I'll pay you back." This is such an ugly. I can't make a one hundred and one today. It's like my life. Uh, like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to pay you back one hundred and one dollars. A lot of people are going to be doing this if this is the current construction. And if enough people are going to the bank and saying, hey, I want to borrow at 1%, the bank is going to say, hey, there's a lot of demand to uh, borrow our money. So we can charge more than 1% because, you know, I'm not going to charge, we're not going to charge to this person, but we can charge to some, you know, there's so much demand that we can raise the price of borrowing. So maybe this price of borrowing, it goes up and up and up, you know, let's say it gets to 3.5%. Because there's, the bank can afford to charge more to, buy, to, to lend its money because there's so many people. Eventually, once you cross this, um, this line, right, once you cross the 3% line of the down move, in this case, let's say you try to do this whole you know, thing again. You borrow $100 at 3.5%. Um, so this becomes 3.5. You buy $100 worth of stock. 
in the worst case move, the stock goes up, you know, three dollars. So you have one hundred and three dollars. I mean, you have to pay back. You have to pay back one hundred and three and a half dollars because you borrowed at three point five percent, which means you just lost fifty cents. Right. So eventually. When the bank raises its rates high enough such that R is greater than D, right, this arbitrage doesn't exist anymore. There's no free money for zero risk. So people are going to stop, I, you know, theoretically, people are going to stop pushing up, you know, going to the bank, asking for money, pushing up the rate. As soon as it kind of crosses that, that threshold, you know, th this arbitrage will stop it. And, and that's kind of the, theoretically how the market will regulate and, and remove all arbitrage opportunities. So, you know, no free lunch. If this, this thing exists, people are going to do the arbitrage over and over, drive up R until it gets past D, and then there will be you know, no arbitrage left. Again, this is all just theory. Um, and this works the same way on the opposite side. So let's say D is less than, U is less than R. Um, you know, let's say we have negative 2%, 3%, and 5%. So in this case, what are you going to do? So basically the opposite case of the other. So in this case, we want to do the opposite. This, this interest rate is really high, right? So we want to uh, lend $100, or sorry. sorry. So we're going to start with zero money. We want to sell. So $100 worth of stock. And this is a little bit trickier. So we're going to go to the broker. We're going to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to sell to someone down the road $100 worth of stock. You don't actually own the stock, but you're going to, you know what? I'll make this even more clear. <laughs> Borrow and sell. Sorry, I was, I was using terminology and kind of cutting corners, so th this is a little bit easier. You're going to go to the brokerage. You're going to borrow $100 worth of stock, so you now have that stock. And then you're going to go out in the market and sell it, right? You're going to sell it, so you borrowed it from the broker. You sold it. You now have $100 cash in your hand. But there's, you know, you, you borrowed, you basically you borrowed a stock. So, you know, you go to the broker. I'm going to erase this. Go to the broker. Um, you borrow a stock, and then you sell it on the um, market. Okay, so go to the broker, borrow a stock, sell it on the market, you get back $100, right? But you have borrowed a stock from the broker. So at some point, you're going to have to give that stock to the broker back. But well, you know, let's, let's say you borrow it for one period. So you sell $100 of stock. You have $100 of cash. You owe the broker stock. Now let's say you invest the $100 at um, which is 5%. Remember the like savings, the risk-free rate is 5%. You invest your money at that. You know, next period t plus one, you've made 5% on your $100, right? So you have $105. However, you still owe that broker stock. The broker's like, hey, give me my stock back. So you go to the market. You buy a stock back off of the market to give back to the broker. Obviously, you're buying a stock from the market to give it back to the broker, so you don't want that stock to be very expensive because you have to buy it back. So the worst case scenario is that the stock went up. If the U move went up 3%, in case it went up 3%, you have to buy it back for $103 uh, to give back to the broker. But hey, you still made uh, $2. And again, you made $2 by, you started out with nothing, you borrowed everything, but you made a risk risk, like no matter what happens, you can even make more than $2. You can make $2 or um, $7 if it goes down 2%. Um, you made $2, risk nothing, and again, if you, let's say you borrow a million dollars worth of stock and you do this, you're going to make a lot more money for, for nothing down. So this would be arbitrage, and this is, if this, you know, if this occurs in the market, what are people going to do? They're going to start to invest, they're going to start to borrow a lot of stock, and they're going to start to invest a lot of their money in this risk-free rate. And again, when you're like when you're lending money, when you're investing money, you're actually um, investing with the bank, right? You're giving them a hundred dollars, 
and they give you back 5%, which is $105. And it's the same thing as before. If I buy 100, this looks so weird. It's the same thing as before. Um, if a lot of people are going to the bank and saying, I'll lend you money, I'll lend you money, the bank can be a little bit more particular and they say, hey, we don't want to pay 5%, we want to pay 4%, we want to pay 3%. And let's say the bank gets it down to 2.5%, right? Let's say, you know, R becomes 2.5, um, R equals 2.5. Now, when you sell the stock, you only make $102.5. If the stock goes up and you have to buy it back, again, you're going to lose 50 cents. So this is how, theoretically, no arbitrage, the no arbitrage principle, principle exists because if it exists, someone will immediately arb it out. They will move, you know, they'll do something to kind of move R such that this, this thing um, exists. So this, we're going to we assume that R is greater than D is less than U because in these two cases, we've seen how agents in the market will act to drive R up or drive R down and kind of get this, this satisfied because if, if it's not, stuff, you know, stuff will happen. Um, people will either borrow a lot of money or get, lend a lot of money. Um, so this is our simple setup for a stock. Um, I know this is kind of a long-winded video, but this kind of explains what the no arbitrage principle is when you have this very simple version of a stock and this risk-free rate. In the next video, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, kind of working with these in terms of statistical expectations. So we'll see you then.